Hi everyone and welcome to my web scraping with Python guide. My name is John and over the course of this video I'm going to talk through what I believe are the five most common ways of getting data from the web and how and when to use each one. Stick around to the end we talk a bit about the legality of web scraping as well. So web scraping is a way of extracting and saving data from a website to be used for another purpose. Whether that's taking data from multiple sources to analyze or using an API, the skill set is very similar. So we will look at some of the basic methods for simple websites and then move on to extracting data from pages that load dynamically using JavaScript or something else similar to that. It's worth mentioning now that this is all for educational purposes only. So who is this for? Uh, this guide will, will not cover the basics of Python, but in itself is not overly complex, nor will it contain any code over perhaps an upper beginner level. Hopefully this means it's accessible to as many people as possible that are willing to learn. Uh, and each of my examples have their own separate video linked below uh, and contain a base to build upon for you to create your own uh, more complicated web scrapers. So just quickly before we get going, the requirements. Uh, everything I've done is written in Python. Um, you don't have to use Python to web scrape, but you will want to. You will need it if you want to use any of the code I mentioned here. I'm using Python 3.8, and I would recommend you get the latest version possible for your operating system, but always Python 3. <coughs> Other things you will need are a text editor. I tend to swap between VS Code and Sublime Text. Feel free to use any that you want, uh, but if you aren't sure what to use, get VS Code. Uh, and I use pip to install any extra packages required and Chrome or Firefox as a browser. So let's begin. The first and most basic, basic method is scraping data directly from the HTML created by the website. These are basic web pages that our browser loads up when we request it from the server. We use the request module to download the page and then Beautiful Soup 4 to pass it and get out the data that we need. The upsides of this approach is that it's very simple and allows us to get data from static websites very quickly or ones that don't have an API or are less modern. So when you're considering you want to use this method, you need to use the view source on your browser to see if the data you are after is available. If it is, you can go ahead and download and pass. Most likely the data will be in an HTML table, which we can loop through and extract each part. Pagination is also easy to deal with. Uh, click on the next page and see how the URL changes and build that into your loop. It will usually have a clear marker. This should be your first put of call for web scraping and will get you by on a lot of websites. So the next thing is dealing with logins. Um, so what happens if your data that you're after is hidden behind a login page? Uh, maybe it's a work system that requires your username and password or something similar to that. Uh, sending requests directly to a page will just return you to the login page regardless of the URL that you use, uh, but we can use requests to send our login information to that page. So use inspect element to find where the login request is sent to the server and copy it and send it over yourself. So remember to use the request session function too to keep your login alive. Once you're logged in, you can proceed. So the next biggest problem we get is rendering JavaScript. So most modern websites aren't static HTML anymore and use scripts to call the data from the server and then our browser renders it into what we see. This means for us that trying to download the HTML won't work, whereas we won't be executing the script, therefore not getting the data. However, request-html has our back and the render function we can use that it has to actually render the page for us. So how it works is it uses the Chromium browser in the background to render the, render the scripts and then give us the source. It also has its own HTML parser that we can use to collect the data using CS selectors or XPass and get all the information that we need. The next method is looking directly for the API endpoint. This is a bit of a different approach altogether, uh, as so far we've focused on rendering the data with our browser first and then picking through that to get what we need. But this way we use the network tab under inspect element to see where the data is actually coming from uh, and then replicate that request ourselves and go directly to the endpoint of the API. Using an API program like Postman or Insomnia will allow you to change the headers in the request and see what information you can get out. The data coming back is generally in JSON format and within the Python library there is a module to work with that. I, have a, I also have a video on JamesPass, which is another way of working with JSON data which could be useful. So the final approach is probably considered a bit of a last resort and can be the most complicated, but in my opinion, it's very much worth learning. So Selenium is a package that will actually let you control your browser 
and replicate anything that you can click or type into a box. It's designed for testing websites, but we can use it to load up pages for us, log into websites or download data. By selecting elements by CSS selector, IDs or the XPath, we can get access to any data that our browser will load up. The downsides of this are that it is slow and resource heavy, especially compared to the other options, but it does give us more flexibility at the cost of complexity. It can also be run headless, and it can even be run from a server, server with no display attached, so it could be very useful for automating tasks and extracting data. There is also Helium, which is built on top of Selenium, which makes it uh, just that a little bit easier to use. So if you're not quite sure, I would definitely recommend checking out my Helium video and learning a bit more there. So this could be considered to be a bit of a grey area when it comes to web scraping, and if you haven't already, you'll probably have come across sites that will actively block you from scraping their data. Now it does differ from country to country, but web scraping itself isn't illegal. In fact, in the US, a court case of LinkedIn versus HiQ Labs, a data analysis company, ruled that web scraping public sites does not violate the CFAA, which is the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. However, it is important to note that we are talking about only collecting information that is publicly available which in this case was the publicly available profile information that anyone could get to just by going on the website. If the data was behind a login, this could be considered illegal, so be very careful when taking data in that way. A lot of website owners now will though put in place precautions protecting their sites from bots or web scraping. And although this is common practice in some parts of the world, this ruling from the US courts actually leaned towards the side of not allowing LinkedIn to put in methods to protect this data. There are, of course, ways around these protective methods. A common way is to IP, IP ban you if you're using too many requests in a given time. We can, of course, rotate through proxies to avoid this, but this does start to lead into a very grey area. There's a thin line, so my advice would be that if you're scraping data, be mindful of the website owner and their wishes. Don't flood the site with requests and do your best to obey the robots.txt information and to use any APIs where available. As long as you do this and only take publicly available data, you should be fine. So there we have it, guys. Five ways to scrape all sorts of data from the web using Python. Hopefully this has been useful to you. All the links in the, are going to be in the description to my videos and in a playlist that will go into much more detail on each of these parts. So uh, hopefully you find it useful. Cheers. See you next time.